Hi, and welcome back to my YouTube channel, Software Testing. My name is Daniel Knott, and I'm happy that you're here today. In today's video, I'd like to talk about the five top trends in software testing for 2022. Yes, so what is this all about, right? Whenever I hear software testing trends, this is a rather broad topic because no matter to whom you're talking to, uh, he or she sees different trends. And the following five trends that I have seen in the past days and weeks, and I think those are trends that might impact our work as software testers. And therefore I would like to share my top five trends in software testing for 2022. And let's take a look what I brought for you today. Trend number one is no code or low code testing tools. Maybe you have heard about these tool categories already. So why is this important and why is this on the rise on the, in the software testing industries? So there are companies, they want to keep up with faster release cycles and an ever changing product cycle. So you may have um, experienced itself on, on, on your own in your team and um, product managers or even uh, organizations. They try to, to explore many, many things that they're, they're changing things. They're implementing MVPs. They're releasing ABCD versions of an app of, of a software product and it's an ever changing software or product lifecycle. And therefore it's sometimes really hard for those companies to keep up with the pace on automation because, because the product is changing so often. Of course, one can argue, why do we do test automation at all for an ever-changing product? On the other side, um, those companies want to release with confidence. They want to make sure that the things they have developed over the past, let's say two weeks, four weeks, six weeks, no matter how, how depending on their cycle, that the things they have done are working well. So the reason is then why those tools, uh, tools are on the rise is they don't want to spend much time on test automation, nor they have the expertise. Um, especially if you look at startups, for example, startups have a high pressure on releasing their product, releasing their service. And for those kind of companies in an early stage of their product uh, life cycle, they don't have much time on test automation or they don't have the expertise because they don't have the money to pay a software tester or a test automation um, engineer to work on these kind of topics. Nevertheless, they must release apps or software products with a high quality and therefore test automation is important. And those companies, they really like to work with low code or no code tools. And that's the, that's the big benefit of it. So what's behind the tools, right? So it's sometimes it's called codeless, scriptless, low code or no code tools. And basically they're using AI uh, artificial intelligence to identify elements on the screen, on a web element, on a native element, on a web application and so forth, and then to um, add them into the automation solution. So they do um, a screen comparison, for example, they read out the, the CSS selectors, for example, and create um, specific elements that the software um, testing framework can interact with. Of course, it offers a really fastest setup for basic automation with less testing knowledge. There's also a big benefit of these kind of tools because they don't need to, to really dig into the how to install, for example, Appium to configure it for the needs on your on your product and on your in development environment. It's much easier for them for them. Sometimes it's even like a, a one-click installation. They have a test automation tool in place and they can just start automating things they would like to test and to make sure that everything works fine for them. However, I see a bit of a downside on those toolings. Um, for complex or custom solutions, those tools might not work because then we all know that whenever there's like a specific requirement that, it, um, that needs a specific implementation and maybe the tool is not mature enough, um, there is, there is, this tool is not the right thing to use, right? So then you need to really to go with a, um, an open source framework or even like a, a, a a paid um, framework that you can use in order to do like really writing test code, writing um, um, real code in order to automate the application. It really depends on the use case and on the on the complexity of your product. However, I think that no code, low code tools will be on the rise in 2022, and I highly um, recommend you to to do some follow up research on the tools out there. There's like a lots of manufacturers and tool providers on the market already. Um, but it's, it's sometimes um, really important to read all the details to really find the right tool that fits to your environment and to your needs. 
as I said, it's an emerging field of technology and it will have an impact on our testing. What's the second trend that I see in 2022? It's blockchain applications. If you haven't seen my video on blockchain applications and how to test blockchain test uh, apps, I highly um, recommend you to follow, watch the following video as well, because I think that blockchain applications will have an impact on us um, because it's more than just cryptocurrency, right? So of course, whenever you think about blockchain, the first thing that um, comes to your mind is Bitcoin or Ethereum or any other coin that is on the market. But Bitcoin, uh, but blockchain applications is, is much more than that. It's a decentralized ledger technology. It's a technology and that's the most important part. It's a distributed technology based on software. It's, it's written in code. So we all know whenever there's like a line of code that is, has been written, there can be bugs, right? And that's why it's important for us to also be, be part of the blockchain testing environment and to have, um, to have some knowledge about these um, applications because there are more and more companies adopting to blockchain. Um, blockchain applications um, have a built-in security features such as proof of work, consensus or smart contracts. If this all sounds really weird for you, make sure to watch the video that I mentioned and, or also down in the video description. I explain in a bit the detail what this is all about and I also have some further up reading on the topic because it's a really complicated one and it's something that you should really dig into because it's really technical and complex. Um, Another thing that blockchain applications has is it has no external authority that needs to, to validate any data because the, the communication is a direct transaction between nodes. So it's like a peer-to-peer -peer network, if you would like to say. So if you know the address of um, the recipient of the blockchain, you can send him or her direct any digital assets, being a currency, being it some data, whatever you want to save and, and store on the blockchain. Um, when I did my research on blockchain applications, one thing that I found out is, is, is the, the most important thing is that non-functional testing techniques are very important, like performance testing, load testing and security testing. Of course, functional testing applies also to those applications. However, security and performance is really key to success for any blockchain applications because the transaction time, the block size and everything that's really crucial for an application uh, these days and um, also I'm following this trend some while now I'm seeing more and more companies uh, joining the blockchain application industry just look at the latest um, uh, news out there from from meta they introduced the metaverse or nft smart contracts just to name a few of them and even governments and countries like El Salvador um, adopting now blockchain applications or blockchain technologies of course, for them it's Bitcoin as a digital currency, but I think it's just the starting point of a, of a new field of applications that will come up maybe this year or maybe next year. Let's see. Um, the third trend that I brought for you today is IoT applications and I IoT application testing uh, because more and more devices are connected to the internet these days. I mean, there are watches, sensors, virtual assistants, um, machines in your household, uh, your thermostat, your fridge maybe, uh, your bike, your car, everything is connected to the internet and is um, sending constant data. So the devices are packed with sensors and as I said, they send constant data to the backend and to the cloud. And this, this poses um, really different, um, difficult challenges for us software testers to keep up with the ever-changing field of IoT devices and also the way how it is integrated in, 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 a, in, a, in a closed system, so to say. Um, one, one key driver on IoT applications, I would say, is the 5G technology. It's, it speed up the trend on IoT devices and application because it offers much more possibilities in order to send data in a much faster way and also to interconnect devices with each other. Um, I think that security performance as well as scalability is key, to, is key to success and important areas for testers to follow. Similar to blockchain applications, I think that non-functional criteria are really important, like security, like, like performance, because um, imagine you have like a really small device with a limited hardware resources and your program code needs to run on this small microcontroller, so you have the, the code has to be optimized for this um, environment. Also temperature can have an impact on, on the field. 
And that's why it's important for testers to test in those scenarios and keep also the, the, the data structure and the data size in mind. And then also the, the sending information to a backend service is also something you, sh you should keep in mind. And IoT poses really complex testing scenarios for you as, test, um, as testers. So it's maybe complex to set up a test environment. This is challenging because imagine you have like a, let's say a tiny microcontroller sitting um, in a car, for example, and the car is connected to the internet and then is sending the data to a backend application in the cloud. And this is a test scenario that is really hard to simulate or to emulate. And so this poses lots of um, additional challenges for us as software testers. And it's something that you, you should think about in whenever you're involved in, in IoT applications. And I see it as a big trend coming to us. I think it's already here since a couple of years, but it, it's becoming more momentum, I would say. Uh, number four, I think <laughs> I mentioned uh, the, this topic I mentioned already in, in two of my, of my trends is security testing. I think it's, it's, it should be a no-brainer these days, but I think it's even more important because security is the most important topic for software products in the modern world. All of our products are somewhere in the cloud, in a data center, um, on a mobile device, on a, on a watch or whatever, and it's saving a lot of data, some really personal data, Think about, let's say, a watch that is, uh, is connected to your wrist and is constantly measuring your heartbeat, your maybe your blood, um, blood um, sensor and everything that is included in there. And this kind of information is tied to your user account and it's saved in the cloud or somewhere in, 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 a, in a data center. And this is really um, personal and critical um, information. And you must be sure that this information is secured and encrypted in, in, in the best way that no external um, hackers or authorities can access this data. So I think that's important because as we have seen also in the past that security leaks have a huge impact to business. It can even kill your business. So if the data breach is that big, nobody will trust you anymore and they will not, not come back. The customers will be gone or also it can have like a huge financial impact on your on your business. So this is really important. Security is critical to every business, I would say. And again, security testing is complex and difficult. I'm not a security expert at all. Whenever I have some security things in mind, I try to get some um, help from, from um, experts. This is also what I would highly recommend you to do is you should get help from experts try to get some external audits on your application, some penetration testing, or whatever you can do in terms of security testing. You can perform some basic security testing in your team already, but this is just not enough to be sure that the, your application is proof, bulletproof for real world um, hackers or, th um, or anything that, that can cause issues on your, on your system. So let's get to the last trend that I brought for you today. And the trend is, machine learning and AI software testing. Um, I already mentioned it's uh, partially in the field of, or in the trend of no-code, low-code applications. And I think that machine learning and AI is already around, but it's also gaining more momentum. So many companies, as I said, already applied machine learning and artificial intelligence to their products. Let's just imagine all the voice assistant that are available and all the, the big brands out there, Apple, uh, Google, or even on Amazon side, everyone has a smart assistant these days, and this is already um, learning from your inputs and is reacting exactly to the um, to your inputs. And it's also learning; it's learning from your habits, basically. Um, as I said, it's also already a trend in the testing industry. Um, what I have seen is that AI is used in heavily in these kind of no-code, low-code tools to to help you in order to generate things. This is also the next point that I brought for you today is that is machine learning and AI uh, helps you to generate test cases, test scripts, reports, test data to help you in your daily life as a software tester to make your life easier. And I think that's, that's really a good part where AI and machine learning can assist us, especially if the, the system is getting really, really complex. And this is also something that is uh, also part of the, the things and trends that I see here is that um, the predictive models that the AI and ML systems are using can help us as software testers to identify areas in the product that require some more testing or has even never been tested. And this is helpful, especially in complex environments 
where you have like multiple systems, multiple layers in your applications and it's like interconnected maybe also with third party systems. And this is where ML and AI can help you in order to get a much better quality uh, on your product. And these were basically my five trends that I brought for you today. Um, let's take a look at the summary. So I would say you should do some more research on the trends. If you're interested in blockchain, in IoT, in security, just, just use the, your search engine and uh, search for those trends, what you can learn about it. Maybe there are some online tools and courses you can do and something you should do actually. Um, while you're doing the research, you can ask yourself the question, um, what skills are required in order to become, let's say, a blockchain application tester? Do you have the skills already or is there something missing? If there's something missing, you could, might, uh, you, you could do a training on it and you can improve the things to be ready for this technology to be around. Um, yeah, this is actually a question that I have uh, brought for you is, will those trends uh, affect your work in 2022 already? If so, please, please, please leave me a comment under this video. Um, I'm really curious to learn more about your, your challenges with those um, technologies. And maybe we can also do a video together because I really would like to, to learn more from people working in IoT, in blockchain, in machine learning. If you have some your, your personal story to share, I would really love to, to do a, a video with you on that topic. And of course, if you already know people working in those areas, talk to them ask them about um, your challenges or the challenges that they have. And as I said, if there's somebody around who would like to talk to me in an interview, feel free um, to contact me and we can make a video together. And I think it's really helpful for us, uh, the software testing community. And with that, I would say uh, thank you. Thanks for watching my video today. Um, please leave me a thumb up if you like the content. Uh, if you haven't done so, please subscribe to my channel to support me. And I wish you a nice day and goodbye.